Hello everyone and welcome to another Conan Exiles tutorial. I'm Exiled Phoenix and in this video I will be going over the updated meta PvP builds for Chapter 4 of Age of War. I will be going over a few options for strength builds as well as a couple agility builds and the gear that goes with them. So before we dive into the gear I want to start off with the basic strength attribute build. So basically there are two non-negotiables in any PvP build. The first is you need 15 in agility, because quick-footed is an absolutely OP perk. If you've watched my agility versus grit vid, basically just having 15 in agility, or at least 20 in agility, is worth more than having a full bar of grit if you've got some stamina pieces of armor, like the Karak leggings for instance. Plus, you get extra speed on top of that. So you absolutely need that 15 in agility to get that quick-footed perk. The second thing is you need 20 in vitality, preferably with Glutton. Now you can use Last Stand if you're a bomber and you're afraid you're going to blow yourself up or something. Um, Last Stand can save you because right now bombs are doing a ridiculous amount of damage to players uh, at certain times. So I'm not sure if that's a bug or what, but Last Stand could be good for a bomber. I prefer Glutton for basically everything and I see most people running Glutton. The reason why I've left the last five in Strength and Agility free is because now we have a couple options here. The build that I see a lot of people using is the Complete Strength, they uh, fill that out. Um, I've been using Crushing Swings a lot, I think it's really OP with heavy attacks and I think it would be really good when you catch someone in a combo with a Lodestone for instance because it'll really stagger and stun lock them. And then what I see people doing with the remaining five points is putting them into Grit. That gives you a little bit of extra stamina. Now. For the purposes of the light armor build, which I'm currently wearing right now, I feel like I have plenty of stamina without even putting anything in grit. I've got 177 right now, it's usually like 182 when I, when I have no corruption. So I usually just go ahead and fill up agility and use double jump. Now if I was in a heavy build, which I'm also going to show you, you have a little bit less stamina, so you could just leave agility at 15 and put that 5 in grit. If you really want to have the 5 in grit and fill agility to get your double jump, you can short strength by 5, which is going to give you a little bit less damage. It's going to be 25% less strength weapon damage. But none of the fourth perks in strength are really that good anyway, so you're not missing too much other than that 25% strength weapon damage. I have tried this build, and without rolling thrust, some weapons just barely seem like they do any damage. So. I would not entirely recommend this, but if you want to have the extra stamina and the double jump, which will allow you to get away better, then feel free to use this build as well. But for right now, we're just going to go with Extended Leap for this light build, and we're going to fill up strength, and I'm going to put Crushing Swings. So that leaves me with 182 stamina, like I said. Uh, I don't think it was because I was corrupted, it's just because I didn't have those last 5 points in agility, and 835 HP, and I will show you the gear build now. Now guys, listen. If you like this video so far, then like it! And if you don't like it, well like it anyway, because it helps me out a lot. And then YouTube may push it out to more people who will like the video. And of course, I appreciate all of you guys who have liked my videos, commented, subscribed, you know, the whole deal. Even if you watch the video all the way to the end, I really, really appreciate you. I'm just saying. Alright, so this is the light armor that I'm currently wearing to get the stats that you just saw. We have the Silent Legion Light Helmet, which gives health plus 48, Void Forge Dragonhide Tunic, which gives strength weapon damage plus 8%, Void Forge Dragonhide Bracers, which give you health plus 48 again, Leggings of Kurak, stamina plus 32. This is really, really important for this meta, this and the Spider Climb Boots, because this gives you stamina plus 22 as well. These two are really, really good, because without rolling thrust giving you a free hit anymore, you need all the stamina you can get. And as you can see, my armor value with this armor, and of course you're going to put bulk platings on each piece for light armor, my armor value is 433, which translates to a 46% damage reduction. Now if I did put 5 in grit, it would be slightly higher, but it doesn't make that much difference. Now you also have a heavy option for a strength build, and this will give you more damage, and also more damage reduction, but you won't have as much stamina. So what we've got here is the Redeemed Legion Helmet, which is strength weapon damage plus 8%, Voidforge Dragon Ribs, which is Strength Weapon Damage, plus 8% as well. And then we use the Silent Legion Medium Gauntlets, which is also Strength Weapon Damage, plus 8%. And of course the Leggings of Kurak to get that little bit of extra stamina, or I should say a big bit of extra stamina. Stamina plus 32. Even though it's light armor, we use it in this build just because that stamina is absolutely worth it. And then we've got the Champion Boots. Now this gives us a little bit of stamina as well, but the main thing about these is that they remove Cripple instantly. 
So, and this is absolutely necessary with a heavy build because with a heavy build, you do roll a little bit slower and you also use more stamina when you roll. So you don't need to be roll spamming as much and it's really good to have that cripple immunity because then you can get ahead of the players that are chasing you and not get crippled and slowed down and have to roll dodge a bunch of attacks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this armor on and we'll see what our stats are. All right, so now as you can see, I have the heavy armor on I've got 739 HP and 167 stamina. Now at this point, you might want to try the other attribute build that I said, which is where we put 5 in grit instead of putting the full 20 in agility. Now we have 197 stamina, which is really, really OP. We also are going to do more damage in this build because we've got 3 pieces of strength weapon damage plus 8% armor instead of just 1, like with the light build. We don't have quite as high of an HP pool, and we don't have double jump, but we have a much higher armor value, and now that rolling thrust has been nerfed, I don't think a lot of people are using it. Therefore, the armor value is going to help us a lot more than it used to. So those are the two meta armor sets for the strength build, and now I'm going to go over the weapons. Alright, so for one-handed weapons, in my opinion, right now, the one-handed sword is really good with the current stamina mechanics. So I've included them in here. First we have the Drunkard's Blade, because let's face it, this one is really OP. You hit someone five times in a row with it, and they are going to have alcohol poisoning, which means their stamina bar is going to drain to zero, and they'll be able to do nothing except walk around, and you can just pick them off. Unless they have an antidote. Then they pop one antidote, you hit them one more time, they're still back in alcohol poisoning. So it's a really OP weapon if you've got one. And this drops from any skeleton boss in the Unnamed City. The Dueling Blade of the Hawk is my second favorite. This gives the Severe Cripple effect, which any light attack, any heavy attack, will have a player moving extremely slow, like a Harpy Spear type slow, which also makes it a really good water weapon because they will not be able to move. And if you want the two highest damage swords in the game, this would be the Els Drinker and the Balias, but the effects that they give are not particularly OP. Still, they'd be really good and good water weapons, and they do a lot more damage than the other ones. 72 damage versus 65. If you want craftable swords, I would not recommend these because they're pretty low damage, but you can craft the Ancient Lemurian Sword or the Lemurian Sword. They're both the same and they're the highest damage. The Lemurian Sword can be poisoned. Also, any weapon in here that has poison on it is able to be poisoned. The rest of them cannot. So you can poison the Dueling Blade of the Hawk. You can't poison any of these other three. If you want to use a one-handed axe, they're still somewhat viable. I don't think they're nearly as good as a sword, but we've got the Axe of the Gate Guardian and the Yogg's Touch, which are probably the two best. Now, there is Axe of the Lion as well, which is really high damage, but it only works with light attacks. It'd be good for in the water, but that's about it. And I put Glimmer Moon on here because it's uh, also really high damage. It's still 76 and 12, like the Axe of the Gate Guardian, but it doesn't do Sunder. If you want a good craftable axe, the Ancient Lemurian axe is still really good, 64 and 26, they didn't nerf it too badly. Now maces. Maces are actually really OP, especially the momentum, with 90 damage and 39 armor pen. This thing, if you can get a good wind-up going, it will absolutely one-shot a player. So basically, you get a good wind-up going, and if they get caught in this last part, they're just dead, instantly. Now we move on to our two-handed weapons. Alright, so Spears have obviously been slowed down. They were slowed down in Chapter 3, but I'm still going to list some of them because they are really good chasing weapons, and from time to time you can get a good heavy on someone, or even a light attack. That's still pretty fast. Most of these weapons I have ranked in order of usefulness, not necessarily damage, although in this case they are ranked by damage. So we have the Mordlin, which is 72 and 21. This is found in the Warmaker Sanctuary. And then we have the Impaler, which gives gouging, and it's 65, 21. This is found in Legendary Chests. And then we have the Gavain's Rusty Pike, also found in Legendary Chest, and this gives the diseased effect with each hit, and it's 64 and 21. And I have to include the War Spear of the Black Circle because it has the new animation. Now if you don't know about this yet, this new sweeping animation basically gives you a light attack that's very similar to the old Spear's heavy attack. It's nice and fast, and even the heavy attack is fast for that matter. The only problem with the heavy is that you can't roll out of it. Like there I was mashing circle, and I couldn't roll till right there. With the light attack, you can roll right out of it as soon as the animation's over, no problem. But since it's faster than the regular spear, you might actually beat someone who has a regular spear if it's a 1v1. And this thing can be poisoned, which makes it really OP. And it's just as good for chasing as the old spear, because you've got the same sprint attack. Craftable spears are still a very viable option, and this is what you'll probably use mostly. The Gravedigger and the Lemurian Pike both have the same damage, can both be poisoned, 
I would recommend going for the Gravedigger, since now in Unnamed City in the Archives, you can get each one of the recipes in order for one fragment of power each, and you're guaranteed to get a new recipe you didn't have each time you spend a fragment. So you'll get the Gravedigger recipe pretty early on. And it takes star metal bars to craft this, whereas it takes hardened steel to craft the Lemurian Pike. You might say, well, star metal bars are rarer than hardened steel, aren't they? Well, not necessarily. You can get a lot of star metal in one run. I've never gone looking for star metal and not found star metal nodes. And hardened steel is just an extra process that you have to craft, especially now that you can't buy steel bars from Mechamosis anymore. Hardened steel is now an extra crafting step that basically you don't want to have to do unless you need it for benches or something specific. And then of course we've got the Ancient Lemurian Trident, which still takes scales of Dagon to make, so it's not entirely worth making, but still does good damage and gives the slightly harder cripple effect just like the Daggers of Dagon. So for two-handed great axes, our best option is the Scythe of Thag. This thing does 95 and 12, absolutely crazy damage, but it is a very rare drop at the end of the wine cellar. You're not even guaranteed to get any weapon, and if you do, it's one of, I think, three possibly four weapons. I've never actually gotten one of these except from a player. You can also get damaged ones from the Karak dungeon, but again they're damaged so you can't even put a kit on them. By the way, all these weapons have a master weapon fitting on them. That's what's giving them these numbers. And then for craftables, this is what you're probably going to go with. We have the Star Metal Great Axe. Now there are DLC versions of this and I've had some people swear that one of the DLC versions, I don't know which one it is, has a bigger hitbox, but I don't know that that's necessarily true. It looks bigger, I don't think it has a bigger hitbox. But yeah, your basic Star Metal Great Axe is going to be 80 and 12, and it still hits pretty hard, even without rolling thrust. It just doesn't do super great against heavy armor anymore. So the best thing about the two-handed swords, which was the down chop, has been nerfed. Every single one of these swords will drain your entire stamina bar, even if you've got 180 plus stamina, if you try to use a down chop. But you can still use regular sprint attacks and be just fine. The one that's going to do the most damage to any player in armor is going to be the Annihilator. The Sword of Krom has been nerfed to 83 damage, so it actually does less damage to anyone wearing armor, even light armor, than the Annihilator does now. And if you want a few more options, we have the Papyrus Blade, which is still pretty good damage and gives Paper Cut, which is a one stack of bleed, the Watch Blade, or the Jedi Ask Great Saber. Onward to Hammers. Now, the Baltior's Lodestone. This is the most OP weapon in the game right now. If you get your hands on one of these, try not to lose it. They don't have the highest damage output, but they drain stamina. So if you hit your target, if it's a player, it will drain their stamina for 30 to 40% per hit. And if they were already low on stamina, you can basically make them stand there and take an entire combo, which will kill them. It's just a very good weapon. Next place would be the World Breaker. It does more damage because it's got higher armor pen, and it creates double Sunder upon heavy attacks and one stack of Sunder even on light attacks. Next would be Ranasan. This thing's got more damage than the other two at 84 damage instead of just 79, but a little bit lower armor pen at 57. And we can't forget to mention the Hanuman's Gata because it has 101 damage, 57 armor pen. This thing does crazy damage if you hit someone with a heavy attack and it can be poisoned. The only issue with this is that it weighs 50, which is going to really weigh you down if you're in just a regular strength build with no extra buffs or armor to increase your carry capacity. And as I said before, you should always be putting master weapon fittings on your weapons. All right, so now I will go over the two best agility attribute builds. So the first one is going to be full vitality and full agility. Uh, we're going to go with fast healer and glutton for punishment as usual. Um, precision Strike and Extended Leap on Agility. Now if you're going for a bow build, you can change Perk 2 to Deadshot because that's going to be really important, and you might even want Rolling Thrust for Perk 4 as well. Then we're going to put 5 in Strength so we get the Heavy and Special Attack 10% boost in damage. And then we're going to put 10 in Grit using Stout for Perk 2 because Endurance is really not that good anymore. The recent nerf to Stamina was to the cooldown, not the actual Stamina regeneration rate. So the cooldown is longer not the actual regeneration rate. You still won't really see much difference at all if you put Endurance on here, because the stamina already regenerates really fast. Stout used to be arguably one of the worst perks in the game, but if you look at the minor difference you see with Endurance, Stout is actually better in this update. And then we put 5 in Expertise, because otherwise the carry capacity is absolute trash in this build. Now I have on the armor that I'm going to want for this agility build, and as you can see we have 570 armor value, despite having some pretty low armor value pieces, like the ranger boots and the leggings of Kurak. And that armor value is due to having the grit 
and that stout perk. The second attribute option would be just straight agility, vitality, and grit. With steel dude for the final perk and grit, so you would take only one third of your maximum HP in damage at a time. This would make you really tanky, and you would gain some stamina and additional armor value, but you would lose carry capacity and damage. Now I'll go ahead and go over the armor that I'm currently wearing to get the stats that you saw. And this is the Ranger Mask, which gives you agility weapon damage plus 8%. Now the Bestial Regalia here, this is a one-piece set that you get from doing the Sacred Hunt event repeatedly until you have enough of the currency to buy this recipe. Again, it's only a one piece, so it's just the chest, but as you can see, it is really OP, as it has agility weapon damage plus 16% total. And it's on the same armor tier as Dragonhide, with the chest piece being 149 armor value. Again, there is only the chest piece, unfortunately, but it is really OP. It takes a long time to farm enough of the currency to get this, but as long as you're going to be on the server for a while, I think it's worth it. But like I said, it does take a long time to grind, so if you don't have that, you can just use the Ranger chest piece. Now, if you're using the first attribute build I showed, with the expertise for carry capacity, you can just use the Void Forge Dragonhide Bracers for a health plus 48. But if you're going to just use the straight Agility Grit Vitality attribute build, you're going to want to use the Silent Legion Light Gauntlets to give yourself an extra 36 carry capacity. And you may even need more carry capacity than that if you decide to carry a lot of arrows or something with you. And then, of course, as usual, we have the Leggings of Kurak and Ranger Boots. Oh, and I did forget to mention, the ranger pieces don't just give 8% agility weapon damage, they also give stamina plus 7. So the weapons you're going to want to use in either of these builds are going to be the following. So we'll start out with swords. The Sword of Champions is actually a short sword, but it does crazy damage, so I had to mention it. And it's actually really good for PvP, because some of the attacks are basically aimbot. But it has 88 health damage and 32% armor pen, so it's just a really good sword. And then we have the Telwar of Amir Karum, which is the only agility one-handed sword, at least a traditional one-handed sword, and it has 64 damage and 21% armor pen. It can also be poisoned, even though I forgot to put poison on it. And as I said, one-handed swords seem to be really good in this particular update. For spears, we really have two options, the Vaulting Pole and the Black Dragon Pike. These are the only two agility spears. Um, the Vaulting Pole, in my opinion, is a little bit better because you can poison it, Whereas the Black Dragon Pike, it has a little bit more damage, but it only puts a one stack of bleed on the player. And then for two-handed weapons, we have the Bekta Corbin, which is the only agility hammer, and it is actually pretty decent. And the Valtior's Razor is a two-handed sword. Again, two-handed swords are not really that great right now, but this is your only agility option for that. As far as bows go, the very best would be the Reach of the Red Mother, at 39 damage, 21% armor pen. In close second, we have the Kari Bow, 36 and 21. This is a craftable, so this is going to be your go-to if you can manage to get the recipe. This recipe drops at the end of the Wine Cellar dungeon, but it's not guaranteed to drop. You are guaranteed to get a recipe, but it's going to be either the weapons recipe or one of three armor recipes. So, the chances of you getting this might be pretty slim. You could get lucky. I ran the dungeon like 12 times before I got mine on the last server that I was on. But if you can get it, this is a really good option. And next we have Draketa's Voice, which has zero armor penetration without a kit on it. But with a kit, it's 38 and 12. And then the Hollow Bone Bow is very close to that at 33 and 21 with a kit. And then if you want just basic run-of-the-mill legendary chest weapons, we've got the Bessie's Bow and Frost Shot. Now keep in mind, some of these are strength and some of them are agility. The Draketa's Voice and the Bessie's Bow are strength weapons, and the rest of them are agility. So if you're going with the agility build that I'm using, you actually don't want the Draketo's Voice or the Bessie's Bow. But these would be good in a strength build. And really, any agility bow would be good in a strength build as well, because you usually have either 15 or 20 in agility also. Now the arrows you're going to want to get are the Mandibles of Adlak Naka, because these carry 18 extra damage and 50% armor pen. The armor pen is really, really important. However, the boss in the volcano that drops these only has a 1 in 4 chance of actually spawning, so you might be better off going for the hollow bone arrows instead, which drop from any of the harpy creatures in the bat caves. And our best craftable option is the Serpent Man arrow, and these recipes can be obtained from the top of the giant tower in the volcano. Anyway, that's all for this video, folks. If you enjoyed this one, you may also enjoy this video that I'm going to post here on the left. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace!